Right, so welcome back to the second part. So in the second part of uh, robot system integration, uh, we will uh, discuss more on the competition development. So this is very important, especially for those of you who are going to take part in the online challenge. Okay, okay let's start. Next. Okay, so the same thing, uh, just for you, if let's say you just came in, uh, this is the arrangement and also the link uh, for, for the information that you need. So you can hit to our, our website uh, if you are finding if you are finding the materials that you see on the screen. Okay, so uh, we have the same set that you can refer uh, on our website. Okay, next. Okay, so the arrangement. So just now we explained about the application development, which is um, I give a summary on the previous classes, and also I show you an integrated. Uh, example, two examples to show you how to put all these things together. But of course, uh, I explained in a very, very brief way. So you need to figure it out by looking more detail into the code, uh, the, the programming later on. Okay? But uh, just uh, remember those um, concepts, general concepts that I explained to you, like uh, in the people tracking, so what I've done, so you can figure it out by finding those things. And then for the party board, so what I have executed, what uh, are the modules that are executed? So you can see uh, by following the steps. And from there, you can see how all these modules integrate with each other by looking at the party board.py. So you can see. So basically, everything is about how you write the public subscribe in between all the nodes. Okay. So um, you can see exactly the example later on in the, in, in the, in the coding. Okay. For the next session, which is for, for this section, uh, we will, um, I'll give you the explanation on how you can prepare for the competition, right? Okay, so particularly on uh, what will be the, the team. So I explain the three teams uh, that you can choose and exactly what are the content that uh, we expect you to create in your development in order for you to join the competition and also uh, the the flow of the competition, the procedure, and also the timeline, what are the deadline, and also later on, Jupiter Robot will uh, introduce uh, to you uh, their platform that you can uh, develop and also pass them, pass your your work to them uh, to execute your code on their machine later on as a part of the robot development support for those things that don't have access or don't have the robots, but you still uh, want to try on the real robot and see how uh, the development can be done. So you can still do that. So later on, Jupiter will tell you more about this. So first, let me explain about the competition. Okay, next. Okay, so um, first thing that you need to do is of course to read the rules. So I put down two links over here for you to refer. The first thing is you need to read the rules 2020, but uh, I will tell you exactly where uh, you need to put more uh, attention. So uh, in the three team uh, for this competition, the online challenge 2020, you can either do the first team is about the competition tasks, which is these three, task one, two, and three. Okay. Then the second one is the open challenge, which is the, with the last one, the open challenge final. And that, uh, sorry, the second one, uh, yeah. The second team, so it's the open challenge, and then the last team is about the COVID nineteen uh, application. That one I will explain later on. Okay, so first I explain about these two. So these two is closely related to the rules. Okay, over here I show you two sets of rules. One is the Robocup at Home Education Rules twenty twenty. So this is the education uh, rules that built on top of the at home rules. So you can see down there we have the Robocup at Home Rule Books 2018. So that is the original at home rules. And the education rules is written on top of uh, the at home rules. So you need to refer to the original one and also on top where we add more things uh, for the education version. Okay, why we do this arrangement is because we want to make ourselves always relevant to the at home rules. So uh, why we want to make ourselves relevant to at home because that is the international RoboCup at home standard. So we want to follow the standard, so we always refer to that. But on top of that, we have some adjustment or 
adaptation for educational purpose. So that is why you need to refer to do these two set of rules. Okay. And why we have 2020 and 2018. Okay, so let me explain. So for this online challenge 2020, we follow the rules 2020 for education. Okay, this one I think is very clear. But actually, the rules 2020 is referred to one year before for the at-home uh, rules. Okay, I know it's uh, quite confusing, but I'll explain uh, once and, and you will understand. For RoboCup at-home rules, it always got how to say, confirm or fix uh, somewhere in the April of each year. And the competition is somewhere in June. So which is like two months before uh, the competition, only they able to confirm the final version of the rules. So which is before that, uh, the rules keep changing and a lot of discussion. So it is not very stable and not good for uh, people, beginner to learn. Because for beginner, you need to learn maybe like half a year before. So during that time, if the rules keep changing, it's very hard for you to learn. So as a policy, the at-home education rule is always referred to the rule book one year before. So which means in 2020, we are using the 2019 rule book for RoboCup at home. So that's why this year, you can see task one, task two, task three, the carry my luggage, find my maids, receptionist. These are all the rules appear in RoboCup at home rule 2019. Okay, so that is the things that, uh, the explanation why it is always one, one year before or at home that we refer during the current year. Okay, so this one clear. So for this year, uh, you are going to do this three tasks, which is carry my luggage, find my maids and receptionist. But I can't tell you exactly how you uh, can develop for these three tasks is because this is a competition. You are supposed to do the development yourself. But in order to help you, I'm going to use the task one year before this, which is for the 2000, because task one, two, three is in 2019 rule book. So I show you the task in 2018 rule books, which is speech and personal recognition, help me carry and restaurant. So these are the three very similar tasks to task one, two, three this year. And I can tell you how my team actually developed for this three. So what are the module, how the procedure and how. So I will try to relate uh, how we develop this based on the modules that we have uh, to show you exactly how we do it. So that will give you an idea uh, how you can do your development for this year. Okay, so that is the explanation. And for open challenge final, you just refer to the final section. Okay, the final section of the rule will tell you about the open challenge. Right, then one more question that people always ask me. So if you choose team number one for online challenge 2020, which is you are supposed to solve the task for education rules 2020, do you need to solve all three? Or you can solve just one, or you can solve one or two or three with some modification. Okay, so now I will summarize everything and tell you, you can solve all or solve either one or solve one or two with modification, all are okay. No problem, okay? So it's up to you. Our purpose of giving you this uh, task is not particularly for you to complete the task, but more to give you the background so that for beginner teams, when you don't know how to set your problem statement, for example, you want to create a service robot, but you don't know what problem you want to solve. You don't know what kind of application you want to build. So this task will give you some idea, some guideline, exactly until uh, how much you need to do, okay, how much you need to do, how complicated the task is supposed to be. So these three tasks will give you some idea what the at-home standard is all about, okay. So you can, yeah, choose either one, do all three, do some modification, no problem. But of course, if you don't want to do any of this, you can choose team number two, which is the open challenge, which is you can do your own scenario. Okay, so you can come up with your own scenario, come up with your own problem statement and do the development based on the problem statement. But of course, you might ask me, so how deep or how complicated the system is supposed to be? Please refer to team number one. Okay, so that is the purpose of why team number one is always there for you to refer. Okay, so for team number two. And team number three, of course, the COVID-19, that one I will separate and discuss at the end of uh, this uh, class. Okay, right. 
So let's start with uh, the, the example of speech and personal recognition. Help me carry an extra. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide, please. Before I start to explain about the, the task, the first thing you need to be reminded is what kind of environment and what kind of arrangement you need to set up uh, for your uh, service robot application. Okay, because the service, uh, service robot application need to be designed based on the environment. For example, you want to design a robot for uh, home service, for, for the activities of the operation in a home environment. Then you need to have the home environment. How does it look like? If you want to design a robot that function in a school or in a library or in a hospital or in a retail shop or in shopping mall and so on. So these are very, very different environment. But of course, uh, they look, how to say, quite normal for you because you're living in this environment. But for robot, they look very different. Okay? And it is this environment is even more complex compared to uh, the very structured environment in, in industry, for example, in a factory. Because in factory, everything is very in order for all the machine to uh, be able to function uh, effectively and efficiently. Okay, because the environment is very standard. So the machine has less noise and less uncertainty. But for RoboCup at home, uh, especially when you ask me, like, so how the room is supposed to look like? Okay, one very interesting policy or, or how to say, concept of RoboCup at home is we don't really define how the environment looks like. Because in every year, we have different um, game field. And the game field won't tell you uh, the specification and it will never tell you the specification until the day you step into the game rules and do your setup. And even during that time also, no specification will be given. You just go there and see the environment because in at home, your robot is supposed to uh, be able to adapt to the environment, which means if your robot able to work in home A is supposed to work in home B, home C, and home D as well. Even though home A, B, C, D may look quite different. For example, your house and your friend's house. Okay, very different. But your robot able to, need to be able, okay, not able, but need to be able to function in different. So, um, so later on, I hope you don't ask questions like, so how big is the furniture or what type of color is the furniture and so on because you try to use the color tracking or you try to come up with the robot with a certain height in order to do the certain tasks and so on. Okay, so what you can do is you try to set up an environment as normal as your house or your school or your hospital and so on. Okay, but over here a few things that you need to keep in mind is a lot of challenges in this environment because in a home environment or in a domestic environment, is it very challenging because of the it is very colorful and also the lighting is very uneven. You have a lot of noise in terms of like a lot of people is talking, echo, uh, the room size varies, the lighting condition varies, the, the, the furniture varies and so on. So your robot is supposed to be designed in order to be able to adapt to this kind of changes. Right, so that's the thing. And second thing, not just the environment and the furniture, but uh, your service robot application is supposed to deal with certain people in the environment. So you will have various kinds of people, personal, for example, like your, 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 your family member, uh, your guest, your customer, uh, the patient in the hospital, uh, the, yeah, the user in the library, and so on. So they will come with different age, different appearance, and so on. So your robot able need to be able to uh, interact with all these different people uh, in a very different interact way. Because some, the way they speak, the language they speak, uh, how they speak, how they deal with robot, all are different. And also, the object. So your robot maybe need to go to a certain place, for example, like in a library, go to a certain place to find a certain book. Okay, so the book might be look quite similar to each other, but they are different, different color, different cover, and so on. But in a home environment, you might have a very different thing. You have different kind of snacks, different kind of funny, uh, sorry, uh, different kind of um, packaging, different kind of bottle, different kind of all these things. So how you want to design 
all these uh, materials uh, to represent the actual scenario, it's very important that you try to design in the way that is close to daily life. Okay, right. So these are the scenarios. So uh, you need to live with it. I mean, service robot, we need to design our robot to be robust enough to work with these kind of changes. Right, next. Okay, so first, speech and person recognition. So in speech and person recognition, what uh, this task asks the robot to do is first, although it's speech and person recognition, but it starts with person recognition first. So you can see uh, the, the, the photo on the right hand side, which is the robot will come into the room and then they will have certain few people that sitting and standing over there in, 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 in one frame. So your robot need to like capture this uh, frame and then guess how many people appear in this. Okay, so for the personal recognition, first you need to detect how many faces avail uh, appear in this photo. Not photo, but in the real environment. So the robot is supposed to uh, detect how many person available in front of him. Then you need to like tell uh, what gender is for each of this uh, person. Okay, whether it's a female or male, so you need to like, uh, label out, uh, circle out the, the, the face and then label out whether it's a male or female and also you need to recognize certain uh, people that the robot recognizes, which is like the operator. So the operator is the person that uh, the robot is familiar with but the rest of the people is, uh, are the people that the robot not familiar with so you need to know uh, how to differentiate between people that you can recognize and people that you, you can't recognize. Okay, right. So this is uh, the requirement in uh, speech and person recognition for the person recognition part. So this is the first part. So after this, so this is the complexity okay, of the task in 2016, okay, 2016, right? So that is uh, for the person recognition and for the speech uh, in 2017. So my team, what they do is like, first, you can see uh, one person is uh, standing in front of the robots and ask questions. Okay, so we will randomly out of like, I think 40, 40 set of question and answer, out of 40 set of question and answer list database that you can develop, the person in front of the robot will speak randomly, pick one question and ask the robot and the robot is supposed to answer. So that is the complexity of the competition. And not just the person in front, but all the people surrounding the robot is, uh, are going to ask question randomly in random order. So maybe suddenly uh, the person in the right is going to ask a question or suddenly someone in the be behind the robot is going to ask a question. So the robot is supposed to listen to what these people are asking and give the appropriate answer. And if your robot has the sound localization module, the robot is supposed to turn itself to face the person who asked the question. Okay? Right. So this... Uh, are all the uh, challenges in speech and person recognition. Okay, so uh, how are you supposed to do? Well, for the first person recognition, you can use um, our face detection, face recognition. Then, of course, for the gender, you can use additional open CV, you have the gender recognition and so on. So basically, you have uh, enough knowledge by now how to start working on this. And for the speech, yes, you also, by using our example, you already can do the Q&A. So how are you going to change the database to suit the new uh, Q&A question that's given to you and so on. So these are the things that you can do. But of course, you can't do the speech lo sound source localization because we don't have the hardware. But if you are interested, yes, we have some, some reference for you uh, how, how we, we do that, okay? All right, okay, so this is for speech and person recognition tasks. Right, next. So for the second one, because this is a video, so I can't play the video, but I'll tell you the sequence. For the help me carry, the scenario is like this. Uh, your robot is waiting in the living room and then your father, who is okay, the head of the house, actually uh, went out and, 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 and did shopping, right? So your father actually came in, drove the car and, and, and came in, I mean like, uh, came back and then walked in uh, the living room and ask the robot help to go to the car to bring the grocery back to the house. So that is the scenario. Okay. So what um, the actual sequence is like someone will walk into the 
living room and ask the robot to follow him or her to the car, which is outside of the house, right? Which is outside of the house where the robot have no idea where the car is located. Right. So the first part is like, first you need to listen to the command that like the person will say, okay, please follow me to the car. Then the robot will ask, okay, I will start follow you. Okay. So this part I already show you in the demonstration, which is you can do using the speech and follower. Then the robot will follow the person out from the uh, house. And during this time, you are going to on your localized, uh, I mean like your, your AMC, uh, which is your navigation uh, module, because it needs to track where the location of the car. So once the robot reach the car, the person will say, okay, stop here. And then the, the person will pass one back to the robots. So you hang on the robot. So if your arm is not working, working now, don't worry because the person can hang the back on the robot, right? So by giving the back to the robot, then the person will tell the robot where the robot is supposed to go. For example, in this case, okay, for example, I pass a bag of grocery and expect the robot to deliver to the kitchen. Then the person will tell the robot, like, please go to the kitchen or, or please bring this to the kitchen. Okay, then the robot will say, okay, yes. So after you hang, then the robot will navigate to the kitchen in the room. So this part is something that, uh, you can do it if you have done the navigation class. So the robot will move back to the house and go to the kitchen and stop somewhere in the kitchen where your key location or your waypoint specified. So it will stop there. Then it will start to like release the arm. So you'll move the arm, release, and then the, the back will, will be placed inside the kitchen. So it complete first half of the task. Then for the second half of the task is the robot uh, will find some assistant so you will look around the kitchen and find if there is any person inside there to help to carry extra or, or the next um, luggage back from the car right so in this part what you can do is you can start to rotate the robots to look around and then you can use the face detection module to find face appear in the room so once you found or detected the face the robot will stop turning and start moving towards the person Okay, so you can use the face detection module to do this and then you can move the robot uh, front in order to reach the person. So once reach the person, okay, you can turn back on your speech to tell the person that please follow me to the car and help to get the grocery. Okay, then after that, the robot is going to uh, navigate back to the original position of the car. Right, and once it reached the car, I mean, okay, so that is the end of uh, the task. So that is about help me carry. So you can see with things that you have learned, you can almost reach 80 to 90% except the arm of this task. Okay, right. So next. Okay, restaurant is a bit complicated, okay, uh, but some parts you can do and some parts you need extra effort. For example, over here, the robot will start from, uh, for example, you can imagine from, from the kitchen or from the bar counter, right? Then the robot will try to find the guests which is uh, sitting on the table uh, who are waving, okay? So you might have plenty of uh, guests around in, in the restaurant and someone is actually waving. So over here, what uh, we do is, um, we do the face recognition, uh, sorry, face detection. So we're able to detect the face. Then after that, using OpenCV, we try to detect the palm, which is the hand, beside the region of the detected face. So if we detected the, the palm, which is a, it's like a waving detect, right? then that is the person that's calling the robot. So with that recognition, the robot will move forwards, uh, reach the table in front of the table and talk to the guests who want to do some uh, order. Right, then you need to like trigger your speech uh, module, talk to the person and try to get what are the orders. So you can design, I mean, you can design your, uh, your conversation, but I think it's quite straightforward. So you try to imagine a waitress in a restaurant, how to ask the guest in order to uh, ask what are the order. So you can set like, for example, you want set A or set B or you want... Uh, what drinks, oranges, mail, and so on. Okay, so these are the things that you can design to take the order. So once the robot taken the order, the robot will move back so autonomously. So now it's using the navigation, which is 
from um, the, 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 the table, move back to the bar counter of the kitchen and deliver the order to the owner, whether the owner of the restaurant or the, or the chef okay, or the bartender. So we deliver the order by telling, okay, so um, guest, you, uh, guest table A uh, would like to order uh, set A and uh, mineral water and so on. So you can, you can tell them and that you will get points. So that is uh, the task for the restaurant. And of course, uh, the second half is like the robot supposed to grab some drink from the bar counter and deliver the ring. But uh, the grabbing part is maybe, yeah, you can skip now. Uh, but you can ask the robot to ask for assistance. For example, like the robot can ask the bar counter to say, that, can you please pass the mineral water and put it on, my, on, on, on me? So you have a basket. You can see like in this, in this robot in front there, there's a basket or a tray that the bar counter can put the drinks on the robots and the robot can deliver these drinks to the table and ask the guests to pick up the drinks from the robot. So without the arm, by just moving around and tell something, uh, the, how to say, you can still develop a robot to do this kind of delivery things. Yeah, so that is for restaurants. So we can see, even with just things that you learn in the class, you can solve like 50% of the tasks by just rearranging uh, the sequence and also make the communication between the uh, module able to talk to each other to coordinate the sequence based on the uh, events or based on the event trigger during the operation or based on the situation. Like you, like you need to detect waving person, you need to detect the location, you need to detect the object and so on. Right, so these are all the three examples. Okay, so I've already explained to you how uh, we, what are the content of the tasks and, and how you can develop based on that. Okay, next. Right, so for the, for the task, I already give you the example. I explained to you how you're supposed to plan on that. And then for the open challenge, uh, you can design your own scenario, but uh, based on the complexity of the uh, task that I uh, introduced to you. Okay, but of course you can go more, you can go extra mile by design more complex scenario. For example, the library one, you can have like a few functions, for example, like how to borrow book, how to show them where to find the books and, and other things you can think of. Or, or, the, or another example, for example, like uh, the receptionist as, uh, uh, in, a, in a hotel, that the robot can take the, the booking of the rooms and even to show, uh, like a bellboy, you can show uh, the guide the guest to the particular room and also at the same time bring the luggage and so on. Yeah, so these are all the scenarios you can think of and uh, if you don't want to follow the, the task, the competition task, you can do your design your own task and do the open challenge, yes. But now I'm talking about the third option, which is the third theme for this uh, online challenge you can design is uh, to address the current issue on COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, uh, so I list down a few, these are actually um, videos, so, but you can find this video uh, online easily. You can find it in YouTube, right? No, no problem. Okay, so on the top left-hand side is about uh, the robots that we design in hospital to help for the uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic. So you can see a lot in news, in videos, in YouTube, and, and a lot of news about all these robots. So they can do a lot of function in, in hospital, uh, particularly, for example, like um, during um, the quarantine, so you might want to reduce the human-human interaction. So what you do is like you make the robot to do the interaction for you. For example, to deliver the mail, to deliver the medicine, to deliver, uh, to, to check the temperature, to check the condition, uh, to give all these things and to try to automate this by asking the robot to do it for all the patients. So the nurse, no need to like, give the instruction one by one and so on. So uh, the robot needs to be able to navigate around, to know the surrounding, to know the patient, to be able to detect the patient, to be able to speak to the patients, uh, to give some instruction and to do some interaction and so on. And these are all the features and function that we already discussed in our class. So all you need to do is just 
to design the scenario like in a hospital and to design the location and then to design the conversation and also the functionality for example like to deliver something or to check the temperatures and something but of course a lot of things like maybe you don't have for example you don't have the thermometers you don't have all those things but don't worry in the in our uh, open challenge or in the video not necessary you need to do everything uh, 100% I mean like you can skip certain part that the judge will understand it is something that we can add on later on okay so no problem you can skip because it is more uh, like we need to see your idea your approach to solve the problem and also how you implement so important is your robot able to solve the question whether you have the actual thermometer or whether you have the actual uh, disinfection devices and so on that is really not so uh, critical in this moment but more is like how you design your robot solution in order to solve certain problem and how you define the problem and how to make your service robot able to assist in this uh, pandemic situation okay so the first is like you can you can you can design a lot like in hospital in in quarantine center and and so on i i can i can imagine you can do a lot of design in terms of uh, service robot application uh, to help this uh, situation okay then on the top left hand uh, right hand side we have the disinfection robot which is you have a mobile robot that have uh, the, the disinfection the uv disinfection um, device and you move around so this one is a very navigation thing so you just need to get the key point and then you just need to move the robots around but of course you might do the, the how to say the object avoidance and also when you when you see people you might want to give some information so give some warning or anything right and then you might also want to give some statistics or some data that you collect uh, throughout this whole journey of the robots so these are all the things that you can think of how you want to design these kind of robots to help and i can uh, i'm very confident that Yes, with our platform, with just the terabot base and also with the modules that you have, you able to develop something that I just said. Yes. Then, of course, um, some new ideas that appear in this. For example, the lower left, the one is uh, one very interesting news in Japan that uh, because now we cannot attend the graduation ceremony, but um, during April, uh, sorry, March, uh, is uh, it was uh, the graduation season in, in Japan. So what they do is like they do this virtual, uh, not virtual actually. It's a, a remote, uh, remote tele operation uh, graduation. So you have uh, the robots that act as an avatar of uh, the person that uh, can join uh, from a uh, remotely. Okay, but. Over here, how are you going to control the robot? Of course, like you may say, okay, I can remove control the whole thing, but it's not easy. I mean, uh, it will be easier if, let's say, you ask the robot to like, okay, go up the steps, then the robot will automatically, autonomously move to the, uh, move to the, uh, the stage. Then you can say, okay, please collect the, the scroll. Then the robot will collect the scroll. Then, okay, maybe you can, well, you want to say something, give speech, then the robot will turn to the audience and say something and so on. So, the intelligent part is very important. In your video or in your demonstration for the final or the video, it is very important for you to show the intelligent development of your robots. So how to make, even though this is a teleoperate operation, but we are not going to control the robot step by step. You are not going to turn the motor step by step, but instead you are going to give high level order, which is like go to the stage, take the scroll, uh, facing the, the, the audience, take a photo, talk to people and so on, then that will show the intelligence in terms of control and also decision making on your robots. Okay, then lastly on the uh, lower right hand side is an uh, is, uh, experiment conducted um, by a team in MIT uh, for work between Apple and Google to develop, uh, to, to, how to say, to experiment on the Bluetooth, I think it's a Bluetooth, uh, the tracking apps. So now people are doing developing the tracking apps and they want to simulate how this tracking is working. So in, in, instead of using real people to do the experiment, they use robots. So, so yeah, so they have that. So you can search on the news 
uh, to get more information about that. But there are many things that we can use service robot to help in the current situation. So I just point you a few examples and I'm looking forward for your idea and your creativity to tell us more what you can do uh, with the platform that you have to address the current situation. Okay, so I guess I have um, come to the end. Um, David, next slide will be the last, right? Okay, so the last one is, um, I'm going to give you an assignment, although it's the last class. So the assignment is please sign up for the competition, all right? So the entry form is over there. And please take care of uh, the important dates, which is the deadline. Uh, over here, I need to mention again, you need to submit your technical video challenge. Okay, first it's like you need to do your entry application, although it is going to expire, uh, I mean like due on June 10, but please do it now so that we can estimate how many teams so that we can ask our sponsors to give enough award, enough certificate, and also enough support in terms of your robot development. So if you respond to us, it's easier for us to ask for all this favor. And also it's easier for us to reach you. Okay, because we don't know who to contact if we have uh, extra information to give for the competition arrangement. Okay, so please uh, fill in the application form and please be, uh, please be reminded that uh, on June 10 will be the, the due date for, to submit the technical video challenge material. Over here, I write material because not just the technical video, which is you, are, you not just send the video, but you need to send uh, a description file to explain about the video as well. For more information about what you need to send, please refer to the website on the RoboCup at Home Education Online Challenge 2020 page. So please go there and have a look. You need to submit the video and also a descriptive uh, uh, technical report. Okay, so how to do that and all the details are over there. Okay, but before that, uh, I mean, Okay, so, but before that, I also need to remind you that if you don't have robot and you need help to do the video shooting, especially in terms of the robots, you can actually, uh, how to say, contact our sponsor. But there is a procedure how to do that and you're supposed to submit some uh, review materials by 1st of June in order for the sponsor to consider to help you. And that will be explained by David after this, right? Then, if you have submitted, you have created your video, submit everything nice, uh, we will do the review from June 10 to June 15 and you will be informed after June 15 whether you will be selected to join the online challenge in the RoboCup week, which is uh, in June 24th to 28th. Okay, one of the days inside here that, that we will do that, right? So, um, all right, so these are all the, all the timelines. Uh, so please take care of this and uh, I guess my explanation is until here and also if you have any question you can ask in the group chat. Then I'll pass the, the mic to David to tell you more about the uh, robot development support in terms of video recording. David? Okay, thank you Jeffrey. Uh, now I will introduce some uh, uh, developed guide for the uh, team who, uh, which we which they want to use the Jupiter robot to take the uh, video challenge. Uh, so if you want to use the Jupiter robot, so I will introduce the robot first. Uh, we'll show you the outline of the uh, of our robot. So this picture shows a different side of view to about the uh, our robot. And we can also show you the uh, real robot use this uh, camera. You can see the the real robot here. Uh, we <coughs> it's almost the same as with, with as the uh, drawing here, and the size of the robot is uh, about uh, uh, a little less than one meter high, and the dimension is about uh, thirty-five uh, centimeters. And then we have uh, show you some uh, basic parameters of the robot about the size, weight, and the main sensors, something like <clears throat> 3D vision. We have two 3D vision sensors and uh, we have a, a RP reader. Oh, sorry, laser, laser reader and the type is RP reader. And we have the distance of, uh, max distance is about 12 meters. So it's, very, it's enough for 
the mapping and uh, navigation in the uh, indoor environment. So we also have the have a demonstration in the uh, Jupiter robot virtual machine image, uh, which can use the uh, uh, laser scanner in the navigation and uh, um, in the navigation mission. Uh, maybe I will public a file to uh, guide how to use the laser to mapping. And we have a computer and uh, uh, we have a arm, but and the arm we maybe it's a little different, uh, difficult to um, how to say program for the computation and make it simple. And the most important thing is the oh, sorry, this is Chinese word uh, is about the to tell the team uh, the basic requirement about the uh, use the Jupiter robot for participating participating in the video challenge. Uh, so if you want to find some um, open open results in the web, you can uh, search about the TurtleBot 2. Pay attention to the model, it's uh, TurtleBot 2, not TurtleBot 3, and not TurtleBot 2E, 2I, just uh, TurtleBot 2. Uh, we almost have the same package and the uh, function uh, about the, uh, of the uh, robot. And the software environment is, we, uh, is that we use uh, Ubuntu 16.04, and the Rose Kinetic version. And the gazebo version is uh, 7.16. Pay attention to the gazebo version, uh, not, uh, please do not update the gazebo to the, maybe the newest version, maybe uh, 11. We just use uh, 7, 7.6, 7 uh, 7.16 is enough for the uh, application. And the Rose package, uh, we have uh, set up, I uh, installed various function packages. Uh, if the team want to install <coughs> different type of the packages, uh, please provide the competition, a uh, complete installation process into instruction doc document, such as uh, how to, where to download the package, uh, how to install the package, and uh, um, uh, the results of the uh, running the package. So we can find out whether we can up, uh, set up the install the package in the robot. And if you want to uh, use the robot, please uh, sub uh, submit the re review in materials to the Jupyter robot. Uh, please pay attention to the date. Uh, the team without the robot platform for the open open platform league, uh, which they want to use the Jupyter robot. Please send the submit the review materials before. Mm -hmm. 6月是June, June 1st. First, first of June. Yeah, yeah before, June. before June 1st. Okay, yep. before June 1st. And uh, from June 1st to June 10th, uh, it's a time for the Jupiter robot to help the team to uh, prepare for the uh, challenge video. So we have 10 days to prepare for the challenge video. But before June 1st, please submit the material to Jupiter robot to the email address support at jupiterrobot.com uh, single r jupiter robot <laughs> jupiter robot and uh, please cc to my own uh, my my another mailbox liu fei my chinese name at uh, ca dot or rg dot cn cc not forward okay uh, the material requirements is uh, uh, is as simple as we can uh, ask ask the team to do uh, make it simple. Uh, first is uh, the comprised file of your own packages. Please use the um, package uh, use the comprise command in the Ubuntu system to comprise the 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 packages to uh, tar dot gz file. It's a comprised uh, type of file, and uh, we also need the detail interest interest uh, instructions about how to install and run the uh, computation functions package. Uh, it's much better for, for us to, if you provide the screenshots of running results, uh, running command list, and uh, maybe description of running effects. Uh, you can provide a video, a text description, and uh, pictures, something like this. And uh, anything you want to provide, uh, uh, is also uh, necessary for us. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Jeffrey.
Right. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jupiter Robot. So this is a good chance. So um, once again, I would like to remind every, you, every one of you that this is a very special robotics competition that you can join even without a robot. <laughs> right. Uh, and also, our sponsor is very generous enough to even support you by lending you their robots to run your code on their robots and also take the video, uh, record the video for you in order for you to compile together with your instruction, I mean like your presentation videos and so on, eventually will become your technical video submission. So I think this is a very rare chance that I never see this kind of uh, offer before in RoboCup history. Uh, so please um, grab this opportunity and yeah, join the competition. So that is what I want to say. I think like um, we have run out, we have, we have run through all the slides, right? So um, as uh, the final um, reminder, so please um, grab this opportunity. Uh, spread this news to your team. I understand because like I contacted many teams, they want to join, they're interested to join, but somehow they just um, have some um, inconvenience in order to join the, the class because of the timing. I understand now that everyone have their own timing in terms of work from home and also like online classes and so on. So I understand all those things. And it is very hard for us to like try to have a common time for everyone because we have people from uh, Asia and people from Europe and people from America, which is now is uh, basically uh, too early for people in Europe to join in, in early uh, in this hour. So um, it is not easy for us to gather, but we have all the materials that we recorded the video, we have all the slides and we open up all this information on our website. So it's, uh, you can see and also we have this class to help you to prepare, which is uh, if you are totally new, don't worry. You can if you miss all the classes before, also you don't worry. You just look back uh, all the videos and our example code is on GitHub. You can download anytime, and we have all the slides available on the website. You can refer. So just pass all this message to everyone around you that interested to join this competition. Tell them about this and ask them to join. And this is a very rare opportunity also because this is an international competition in RoboCup, which is never have such open competition before that you can join directly to the final selection. I mean like once your video is selected, you will join the final in RoboCup week. Okay. Although this is not a, an official RoboCup league event, but this is a RoboCup level, uh, I mean, activities. Okay. So we have even our official partner is uh, the RoboCup global sponsor. And we have uh, the award and also certificates that we can yeah, give it to all the participants. And also like, yeah, if uh, your, your development is good, you will be awarded. Yeah, so I think uh, it is a very good opportunity. And yeah, uh, also you no need to actually fork out any registration fees and also you don't have you don't need to have any travel support to the RoboCup event in order to join this competition so I can see these are all the opportunity that is very very valuable and also very rare because never have this kind of thing before so please um, spread this thing get more people to join if I have more numbers from you if I have a lot of team the response is good we are going to continue doing this for the following years and so on. So please help me uh, to get more people to join. Don't worry if you are the first timer. Don't worry if this is not your expert, um, um, uh, how to say, uh, your, your development, uh, sorry, for your expertise. And, and don't worry even you are not an engineering student. As long as you're interested, you want to pick up some new knowledge now while you are staying at home, we already designed everything that you can do, even just staying at home, right? So. All you need to do is just to spread the information, gather your team, fill in the form, and follow uh, the procedure. Okay, so I look forward for your submission. And for you who don't have robot, please grab this opportunity to try on the Jupyter robots. Okay, you just need to do your development in ROS in your computer, send the parts to Jupyter robot, and they will show you how your work is going to happen in the real robots. Okay, so, and then you just take the video and just submit the video, then we will see 
how uh, good you have um, learned in our online classroom uh, session and also how creative you design the application, especially if you are choosing the third um, team, which is um, we try to address, we try to do our part to tell the world that what we can do for the COVID-19 pandemic. So I, I feel that all these things are very meaningful and hope you can grab this opportunity to join. So once again, I would like to thank some Jupiter Robots as our technical partner and also sponsor uh, to give us um, a great support uh, throughout this whole um, online classroom session. And also they are going to keep on supporting us by providing you uh, the robot development support and also by the end also provide us with the awards and so on. So um, yeah, we have awards for that. So please uh, join the competition. And I would like to say thanks for you to joining. Um, we have quite a number last week and we have some numbers this week. And yeah, I don't know. But I have quite um, pleased with the response that I get from Facebook because I checked the Facebook, like some people are actually look, uh, watching over there. And I also have a lot of um, uh, feedback from other social media, um, WhatsApp and so on. So I really hope by now everyone can take some action uh, because um, we still not, I mean, we have some um, uh, application, but I expect more application based on the response that I received. So please, uh, maybe a lot of you still consider whether to join or not. What I can say is join first and see later, right? You can try to develop and see how far you can go. Don't worry, don't worry that you cannot, you cannot come up with a 100% development. Yeah, nobody can come up with 100% solution. So just give us whatever that you can do and then we can see how much uh, you can go after this. Right, okay. So with that, I would like to say thanks to everyone and um, especially for you guys who joined. Uh, and thanks to Peter Robots. So I would like to end this session and summarize and conclude. And yeah, so look forward for your entries and we will talk again more in the competition. Okay, so if you have any question, you can still uh, send in the group chat. We will still respond after this, but we are going to close the session and we will stop the recording and also uh, the streaming. Right, thank you everyone and good luck in the competition. Thank you, thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, it's our honor to support the Open Challenge. Uh, thank you, thank you all of us. All right, thanks David, thanks to Peter Robot.